Welcome to the Answers for Elders radio show. Meet the trusted experts who will give you straight answers and will help guide you on the path of later life care. Now, here's your host, founder, caregiver, and CEO, Suzanne Newman. And welcome, everyone, to Answers for Elders radio network heard across the USA and on your favorite podcast channel and also on YouTube. You know, there are a lot of things that we talk about when we talk about getting your ducks in a row, getting, making sure that you leave a legacy behind for your loved ones, making sure that if you become incapacitated, if you need help in your later life, that there is absolutely documentation that honors your wishes. And, you know, we are here with um, amazing estate planning attorney, Stephen Waltar from Legacy Estate Planning in Bellevue, Washington. And we're going to talk a little bit about documentation that you need as you get older or different things like that, incapacitated in a hospital. So welcome to Answers for Elders, Stephen Waltar. Glad to be back. Um, Stephen, you are an amazing estate planning attorney. And one of the things you've defined is that, you know, what estate planning is, is to really honor your wishes towards the end of your life if you can't speak to your, for yourself. And one of the things that you talked about a lot was trusts in previous um, segments. Tell me a little bit about, um, we talked about a regular trust, but we touched on living trusts last time, but we didn't really talk about it. Could you explain me a little bit about a living trust, what it is? Yeah, a living trust is a, a tool that was used like more than a thousand years ago to get around the king's court, you know, to get around probate. Mm -hmm. So yeah. it's a private way to own things where you have a trust door or trust doors that, that create mm -hmm. it, you have trustees that manage it, and then you have mm -hmm. beneficiaries. So right. it's a lot like you have a, a chest or a drawer and you move things into it and then you have use of them during your lifetime. Mm -hmm. And then following your death, depending on whether it's a married couple or a single couple, there's certain things that happen. And when all the creators are gone, then mm -hmm. uh, it can be as simple as outright to the beneficiaries or you can mm -hmm. still give in trust with some protections yeah. for the beneficiaries. Now, so what's the difference? Why do people say that there's that living trusts are better than a will? So the best way to talk about this, instead of giving you a list of 12 reasons, you know, there's, yeah. there's pros and cons with everything, but I was right about the point of signing the fee agreement with, with this couple. And, you know, it was a retired pastor and his wife, they didn't have a lot of money. And I, I, I was just doing a simple, I love you, honey, will plan. And mm -hmm. the wife says to me, Steve, how come Susie Orman says some people, you know, people should have a living trust. I said, well, some people are worried about avoiding probate. And then she says, well, we're worried about avoiding probate. And I said, well, some people are, are kind of worried about incapacity. And they, you know, she says, well, we're worried about incapacity. And then she, then I said, well, some people are, are kind of worried about privacy. They don't want anyone to know who gets what, when, and how. And she says, well, we're worried about that. And after like three, four, five things, I said, would you guys like a trust? And they're like, yes. And I gave them a discount on the fee because, you know, trusts are a little bit more work and more cost. Mm -hmm. But trusts are beneficial because of so many things, maintaining yeah. privacy, avoiding court, flexibility if you move from state to state. Sure. Uh, they are essentially a will replacement tool. And, mm -hmm. and they're not for everyone, mm -hmm. but they just, they do an awful lot of things. Yeah. And obviously the difference between a trust and a will, there's things that during your life that it will um, benefit you. Isn't that correct? If you become incapacitated? Exactly. There's, there's, there's lifetime benefits and there's mm -hmm. death benefits. So the lifetime mm -hmm. benefit on the one hand, it's generally more cost and work to set up a trust. Yeah. On the other hand, it's more likely to work because who knows your assets better? You or the kids and the grandkids. So frequently when someone does a will, they don't check their life insurance or their IRA. They don't look at anything. They don't retitle anything. Mm. But trust kind of makes you look at how do you own things? What should mm -hmm. be transferred into the trust? Mm -hmm. And once you have things in the trust, it means they can't be subject to a court process of a guardianship or a probate. They're in the trust. And wow. then you have backup trustees that sure. manage things. So, so it kind of, of tells, peace of mind and organizational element during life. Yeah, I, I mean the way you're describing it, it kind of tells a story. It tell it it helps you along the way, and it brings people in that you want in on your team in many ways, doesn't it? 
Yeah, I mean, I, I think a good estate plan means that your financial advisor and your accountant and your attorney, mm -hmm. I mean, and maybe even your successor trustee, people are communicating. Yeah. Uh, you don't have to. You don't have to share your plan with someone until you die. Yeah. But a trust makes you ask the tough questions. Mm -hmm. How do you own things? Mm -hmm. I constantly find in our community property state, the house was in husband's name alone. Because they're remarried. Like, uh, do you mm -hmm. realize that then that's going to go half to your kids from the first marriage and half to your wife's like, yeah. oh, we want to step up in basis. So you get to correct titling problems yeah. at the trust. Yeah. You, yeah. You honestly should do that if you had a will plan as well, but you often don't. So I'd say titling is yeah. actually a benefit. So in other words, title your home in the trust, title yeah. all your assets in the trust. And then as one party of the trust passes away, it doesn't mean that the trust goes away because obviously that second, that spouse is still there. Isn't that correct? That's stage two, right? Yeah, <laughs> right. Yeah, and so I was just have... going to ask you, so what happens at time of death? Uh, well, let's do the simple one. So okay. let's say it's a single person. They did a trust. It could be as simple as you gave everything outright to the survivor. The, the trustee is a lot like a personal rep in a will. They mm -hmm. are appointed once you show a death certificate, we go through a little process to say they have authority and they could just, uh, you know, do the final tax returns and value yeah. the assets and distribute. But frequently you're providing protection for the next generation. Yeah. I mean, maybe you don't want your kids to get everything at 25, right? So there's right. a trust that will kind of stagger the distribution. Or you want divorce protection for the kids, mm -hmm. uh, or mm -hmm. you want to create a legacy for grandchildren and education. Mm -hmm. Well, then the trustee would continue to manage the trust under the terms mm -hmm. on behalf right. of the beneficiaries. Right. So, for example, there's a lot of blended families out there. I, you know, my my fo my father and his wife were a blended family. Um, so obviously that makes a big difference in a trust if you've got a blended family, for sure, I would imagine. That's a huge difference because <laughs> you love your spouse. That's why you got yes. married a second time, but you don't want them to get everything and then no. your kids are out of the picture or the right. pool boy or you know snake lady or someone gets all the money and nothing is for the kids. Sure. So yeah, for sure. married folks, it's a little bit more, even in a first marriage where the mm -hmm. estate's more than 2 million or in a blended family, True. you're going to have a trust that provides for the benefit of the spouse, mm -hmm. but can't go to creditors, can't be used to pay estate yeah. taxes, can't, you know, whatever. Yeah. And then when the survivor dies, that will then go to your own chosen heirs. Yeah. So there's a way to kind of double the tax protection yeah. and yeah. provide a, a, a way to, I mean, that's what happens during a meeting. I'm trying to figure out how much are we favoring the spouse versus how much yeah. are we favoring the children of the first person to die. Mm -hmm. but it well, and it's also, yeah, it's also for the adult children. Um, maybe their parent passes away and this, and the wife, the stepmother or step or stepfather has the assets until their death. The point is they want to make sure that they're still in the picture. Isn't that correct? So that, that's a big, that's a big thing with the family. A lot of times if it's a blended family, but also, you know, I can imagine, um, you had mentioned something early in the interview about privacy. Um, this is really interesting. So wills are not private? Wills are not private. You can today, you can Google famous estates. You can read Elvis Presley's will today. Wow. You can read Jacqueline Kennedy Onassis's will. And she was a very private person. So that's crazy. And actually, when I believe it was Jerry Garcia died, um, the, the he he had property in Washington and people could look up the will, see what the property was. And then you can go to Google Earth and you can zoom down on the property. I mean, that's a little scary. And that's before Very AI. Scary. With AI now, it's worse, right? But yeah, people that want to maintain privacy will generally plan with the trust. Bing yeah. Crosby, plan with the trust. Uh -huh. Frank Sinatra, plan with the trust. I mean, we, we don't know who were the beneficiaries. It's private. Wow. It's amazing that people that wealthy... <laughs> Didn't have, I mean, just uh, it was, is it trust? I'm asking probably a really stupid question, but is it fairly new in the world of long-term estate planning? I mean, when did it, this, this ability come to be? Well, I started by saying trusts are a thousand years old, used to get around the King's Court. Wow. So wow. they've been in the U.S. forever, really, but a lot of attorneys make their money doing probates. 
You know, you do the will. Oh. It's very easy to change a will. You don't, it's easier on the attorney. They don't have to look mm -hmm. at the assets or the title. Yeah. And, you know, a, a lot of attorneys consider that their annuity is they've done all mm -hmm. these wills. When people die, they get paid mm -hmm. to do the probates. So that's the old school was definitely probates and the trust attorney or the, uh, mm -hmm. the probate attorneys. And obviously probate takes a long time to resolve sometimes. I mean, I've heard some things are in probate for years. Yeah. I have a friend that lasted almost 29 years in a probate, which is ridiculous. It's normally, you know, nine months to four years or something like that, but you can't finish it less than time. five months in our state. Some states mm -hmm. maybe longer, some shorter. Right. Yeah. Right. And so obviously this is a, to have a living trust, um, what, who's an ideal, I mean, if you have assets, what if you don't have a lot of assets, is it still a valuable tool for someone to have? Yeah. When people ask how much money do I need to have to have a trust? That's not the right question. The real that, goal is uh, for me to understand their assets and who, mm -hmm. and to understand the heirs, who do they yeah. want to benefit? You might yeah. get a situation where someone has a large estate and they don't care if everything goes outright to the kids. They're not mm -hmm. worried about divorce protection. Mm -hmm. They might do transfer on death and a yeah. trust is overkill. A will is a backup tool. Doesn't matter. Yeah. In general, whenever a couple, a married couple has north of $2 million, mm -hmm. then the trust can double their tax exemption. So if you can avoid two probates with one trust, that's a pretty good financial investment. Absolutely, absolutely. But, but there are probably times when the cost is about the same to do a trust mm -hmm. as it is a will plus a probate. But there are times that people are like, well, I, I want privacy. My my yeah. my daughter's out of state. I want her to be able to handle it. I don't want an in-state agent. Um, it's it's not purely the size of the estate. It's mm -hmm. kind of the assets and the benefits. Right, and the situations like you talked about. Wow. Well, this is really in, in, interesting information. And, you know, further on, Steve and I, are, we're going to talk a little bit more about who has control in a living trust. How can you set your trust up to make sure that your wishes are honored? And in the meantime, Steve, you can reach Steve at Legacy Estate Planning in Bellevue, Washington. And again, what's your phone number for, for people to call? Yeah, it's 425-455-6788. Fabulous. And we'll be right back right after this. We at Answers for Elders thank you for listening. Did you know that you can discover hundreds of podcasts in our library on senior care? So visit our website and discover our decision guides that will help you also navigate decision making. Find us at AnswersForElders.com.